here we've got a really one of my favorite uh, battery chargers. It's not the only good one, but it's definitely one of the best ones. It's a Pro Nautic from Pro Mariner uh, 12, which is the voltage, nominal voltage of the battery. They come in 24 as well. 40 is basically the amperage. They come in 20, 30, 40, uh, 50, and 60. Um, you can have different settings for the type of batteries that you have. Um, they show you even the output. I mean, they, they're just, they're really good and they're quite reliable. What I like what I'm seeing here is you've actually got wiring that is actually going, this is a three output bank, but right now you can see because on this boat there's only two banks, there's an engine and a house. You've got three wires connected, a negative and two positive. And what's really interesting also to notice is you're actually a shut, there's actually a ground wire, a chassis ground wire. Many people don't install chassis grounds. Um, they, you know, inverters and chargers are going to work without them, but it's kind of like foregoing a seat belt in your car. You don't need a seat belt in your car uh, to actually drive a car, uh, but in the event that you're going to have an accident, you're going to want to have a chassis ground. And so that's one of the most common things that we see missed on chargers. Really like this charger. It's nice. It's quiet. Good footprint. Um, they and they're they're very reliable. Uh, what I'm looking at is um, some battery switches. And when I came on board, I saw two battery switches. And uh, I can see some labeling, which is great. Labeling is great. You can see engine battery. Um, and then you can see another one. And so you've got an on-off switch here. And then you've got another switch here that wasn't labeled, and it's got heat shrink on it. And I wasn't too sure when I came in, and I was trying to figure out. You can see this is welding cabling, right? So with welding cabling, it's absolutely essential to put heat shrink terminals. Absolutely essential because the cable will corrode much easier than actually a marine gauge cabling. But you've got here an owner or someone, we don't know who did this, but uh, what we've got is you can see this is actually the feed coming from uh, the house. Goes in, you turn it on, then current goes here and goes to a breaker and then out and then back um, all the way to um, the windlass. This is actually not just a fuse. This is actually a fuse and also an effective switch. When I press this here, I've actually opened the circuit. So this switch is effectively redundant. There's no need to have this switch. It's basically the circuit is right now doubly switched. So you could simply go directly from the battery and simply remove this and have this cable come over here and then you would have the windlass just be on and off with the circuit breaker. Um, the other thing too that's really good about the location of those switches, and we see this all the time, is that battery switches need to be accessible. If the battery switches would have been down in this hole, um, yes, they would have been potentially the most shortest path between the batteries and the negative and the positive distribution. But the problem with that is that then it becomes really inaccessible to operate the switch in the event of an emergency. So you always want to have a battery switch that you don't have to go in a hole or under inside deep in an engine room to actually turn off. Because in the event of a fire, um, it would be nearly suicidal to actually go down in here while everything is smoking, you can't breathe, to actually go turn off that switch. Here we've got a fuse holder, a engine battery fuse holder. And we've got a spare fuse, which is great. You don't have to put a fuse on an engine battery. You really don't. Um, but if you're pretty confident in what the draw is of your starter, you can actually put one in an ANL battery. In this case, there's a 400 ANL. So it's probably generally on a starter circuit. If you're going to use one, you'd want to use a ratio of two to one. So, you know, so that the engine obviously never uh, causes a nuisance trip. So here you've got an ANL 400 that's going to allow a big surge of current to go in multiples of 400, but for a very small amount of time. So when the engine is turning over, um, it should be able to easily not cause the use of stripping on that fuse. And the advantage of putting one on an older boat is if ever the starter does get stuck or there's a dead short from the starter to the engine, which is common, um, you're actually not going to have a fire.